Welcome to World Cinematic Business. This is your host, Frank the Vamp, and uh, we're continuing our uh, talk about my top favorite, my top 10 favorite uh, Stephen King adaptations. And we just talked about number four, Misery, and now we're going to talk about probably one of the greatest horror films of all time, which is The Shining. And I mean, I'm going to keep this video short because there's not a lot of things that hasn't already been said about The Shining. I mean, it's like I said, it's one of the greatest films, greatest horror films of all time. I mean, one of the greatest directors of, of all time, Stanley Kubrick, uh, Jack Nicholson, superb, you know, super acting, Shelley Duvall, Scamman Crothers, Danny Lloyd. I mean, so many memorable moments um, on the plot. And I mean, starting with the cinematography, man, we could talk about hours. I mean, just just to touch up a couple of things from the starting shot of the movie you know it's brilliant beautiful you know from from the isolated you know overlooked hotel to the uh, you know the bloodbath in, in the hallways of the hotel and 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 and, and Danny Lloyd you know riding his little tricycle all around and seeing the twins and the, the nightmarish imagery with the women in the bathtub and, uh, and we can go on and on and on man this is brilliant uh, br you know awesomely shot beautifully directed uh, it's almost perfect I mean it's just there's no other way to say it if you haven't seen this film I mean you you gotta watch it because you can't call yourself a horror fan and not seeing The Shining and uh, if you're like a beginner, if you're just starting horror and you're watching this, you know, as soon as this video is over, just go go get The Shining, you know, buy it, buy the, buy the, you know, buy the DVD, buy the Blu-ray, just, it's one of the best investments because it's a, you need to have that in your collection, you, I mean, that's something that every horror fan has to have, and, um, the only thing that I can talk about to further this discussion is the fact that um, and perhaps the only reason why this is not number one or one of the two reasons first one being that I you know I think that this is probably one of the best movies of all time just horror and otherwise um, it's it's brilliant it's incredible but you know there's just a couple of other movies that had touched me in a different way and there's a certain aspect of it maybe the subject matter or the acting or something else that i just prefer but it's just a matter of preference but this is just this is just it you know and as far as far as the uh, uh um you know other reason is obvious well <laughs> the thing about it is that stephen king himself didn't like this movie for a long time i mean he he, he did acknowledge the fact that it was a good movie, but he said it was a poor adaptation. And and the, the fact being that he, the book, if you read the novel, it's basically a domestic violence, child abuse tale. I mean, it's just, you know, the, the father, the, the, it's a descent to madness of a good father that, you know, becomes a drinker, becomes a, gets depressed and I start, you know, abusing his kid and his wife and, and and just descends into a monster, you know, which is, which actually, you know, the kid fears his father more than he probably fears the spirits, the supernatural activity with the, the Overlook Hotel. This is more terrifying to him, the fact that, you know, that his father can strike him dead, you know, that's, and usually you're a kid, you trust your father, you trust your mother, you trust your family to be your, the people who will protect you. And that's, and that's what Stephen King wanted to convey at the, you know, he wanted to dress up this, uh, you know, supernatural tale, but at the core, it's just about domestic violence. And, and that's the one thing that he had to do years and years later with the miniseries remake, which, by the way, it's it's pretty much dismissive and pointless as horrible effects, uh, horrible acting in many ways. And however, it does have one thing right. I mean, that they finally made it more. They they, they cast it uh, um, uh, an actor that, unlike Jack Nicholson, already looked 
you know, damaged and already looked broken. This guy kind of, he, he looked sweet and then slowly descended into the monster at the end. That was what he wanted to convey. So perhaps because of being an, an adaptation, that was lacking. So if there's anything that prevents the shine, Stanley Kubrick shining from being perfect, perhaps is that. However, it's a perfect film. It's an awesome film. You just got to watch it and love it like me and every horror fan that I know loves the film. So now stay tuned for number two. There's two more movies, but number two may shock the hell out of you because you're not going to guess it. I don't think you can guess my uh, the next film, but hey, try it out. Leave, the, leave in comments, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Take it easy. See you next one. And I just got to say, I just got to do it one time. Red Rum, Red Rum, Red Rum. Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs>